Hi, everyone. So uh, thank you all for being here. Um, uh, I'm uh, Razvan, Razvan de Aconesco, and the community engineer for the, uh, for the Unicraft project. Uh, and my talk is going to be the journey of the Unicraft project from a small project to what I would call a maturing project, maybe not yet mature, uh, and how we ended up there. Um, the aim is to be is aim to give you this story to show you lessons that we learned along the way in the hopes that you would be able to use them uh, for the project that you are part of. So kind of growing them to, um, um, let's say, as I said, a maturing project. Uh, as I'm a fairly technical guy, even I'm doing community management, I have things, uh, let's say, engineering structure. So uh, I'm going to have three planes, uh, people, resources, and process I will talk about. And then in the end, I'm going to focus on uh, three takeaways, lessons learned, difficulties, and challenges ahead. Uh, for starters, about Unicraft, uh, maybe some of you know, some of some may not know. Uh, Unicraft is a unikernel. We actually call it a unikernel SDK, Software Development Kit, meaning you are able to tie in different pieces to create a, uh, 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 a unique unikernel image. Uh, the key word for Unicraft is specialization, uh, meaning that you would be able to select given components that you typically have in an operating system and application select them, those components and carefully tune them towards your use case. This gives you three to four prime benefits. The, the most important one is uh, efficiency. You're going to waste less memory, so memory footprint is going to be reduced because you're only going to select the required pieces. Imagine you're going to build an Nginx application, you're going to require a, a networking stack. If you're, however, going to be the database application, you're not going to require a networking stack, you're just going to require some standard library and some file system. So that's the prime benefit, only carefully tailoring the required bits to your application. The other one is security, because this one, uh, kind of compared to containers, runs in a virtual machine. The keyword here is you want to use VM-based isolation. And the third one is uh, performance. How do we do that? When we select those libraries, so everything is written from scratch, it's basically a set of micro libraries that form the DOS, uh, DOS features. You select them and then you are able to find, finely tune different parameters, let's say memory use, types of, type of scheduler, type of memory allocator uh, for your need. So you get your application, you, you then fine tune it to your need and then you create a, 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 an image. Also, because everything runs in a single privileged domain, you may know of kernel mode, everything is then faster, you don't have the switches, user mode to kernel mode that you have in your typical OS. Uh, and this is uh, kind of the journey, so this is the years um, of the project. I've actually been involved in the project since 2019. So uh, it started, it, mostly it started here in November 2017. As I said, it started as a research project. So uh, this was a paper. Uh, I'm also an academic, so I'm, I'm also part of the University of Politica Bucharest. Uh, I wasn't part of this paper. This was a paper that proved you can have fast VMs as you have containers. This was work initially done on the, on the Zen hypervisor and proved this. Hey, you can have VMs with the same, um, let's say, performance benefits and boot, boot benefits as containers. Then the first commit game came about at some point. This was the, using GitLab for some time. Then there was a move to GitHub. Then we had the, another paper. Uh, this was awarded the um, uh, Best Paper Award at Eurosis, a, to a top conference in 2021. Uh, we finally had the move to Discord, kind of growing the community. And uh, eight months ago, uh, we are part of a startup. So there, there was a seed funding. Uh, for the kind of, let's say, the startup base, the commercial version of the, of the project. So this storyline is going to be the, the skeleton uh, of this journey I'm going to give you, the, this presentation. Uh, this is an evolution of the project. So uh, I, I did three lanes uh, two years ago, uh, let's say eight months ago and, uh, and today. So this is the number of stars. We've, we are close to reaching 1.5 star, K stars. Uh, we have quite a bunch of Discord users. I'm going to tell you about how we got to that point. We are now in the process of doing the 013 release. It was supposed to be two days ago, but uh, we are now doing some updates to it. Uh, and the, the commits, the number of commits, the, um, uh, the number of lines of code added 
are fairly consistent. It's the project itself is maturing, so it's expected that there are going to be more, let's say, updates and maybe more deletions than actual lines added, uh, but it's still going over there. So my, this is kind of our uh, experience in growing the project from a, from a small project to this medium-sized project. And this, this is hopefully something that you can use for your own experience in uh, getting uh, to a project like that. This is kind of the evolution of the number, the number of stars. This is today, we are at 1,364 1, stars. Um, how does the community look like? Uh, I'm going to give you an overview before we go into the actual items. So there are about 40 active contributors. Uh, 10 of them are core contributors. They're also part of the, uh, uh, the Unicraft uh, company. Uh, we have then about 10 experienced contributors, some that have two to three years experience in the project and are, are actively contributing and maintaining and doing reviews. And 20 contributors that uh, are kind of maturing also in the project. So we have these three layers. And key of that is also because of my involvement in University of Politica Bucharest is quite a bunch of them are students. So I think about three, three, uh, 75 percent, three quarters, that was what I was aiming for, uh, are students. Uh, well, at UPB, we have some collaborations with Aachen, University of Manchester, TU Austin and others. And there are also some, some partner companies and interesting com partners that are, are part of the community. We're trying to enlarge that. And there's the level of infrequent contributors. If you go into any sort of talk, I was just a part of a talk of uh, Don Foster. You're going to see that there is this level of infrequent contributors that we have, uh, and we are trying to enlarge that number as well. Okay, that being said, kind of given this overview of the Unicraft project and the, the way the community works, uh, let me show you things that we've done on, this, uh, on these three pillars of uh, of we had uh, people, resources, and processes. And each of these three pillars is another three pillars, so it's kind of, once again, engineering structure. So I'm going to talk about recruiting, engagement, and belonging. Uh, I think these are kind of key items for getting people, uh, uh, humans, as Don mentioned, as part of your community. So for recruiting, what we've been doing is most of the, of the new recruits, let's call them, are part of the university. So we are very, uh, very engaged in universities. We are doing events. I'm mentoring a lot of students in my academic position to get to the projects. Something very relevant here is that we are using their academic career. So they have a bachelor thesis, typically after three or four years. Then they have a master thesis for another two years. And well, if they also pursue a PhD, they can continue being part of the university and part of this project. And what I've been doing is I've been mentoring second year students such that we, have, we can have them for three years of bachelor studies and then two extra years of master studies, giving you a five years plan. And ideally then they, they would be there. So my first, let's say, uh, generation of mentees are now graduating the fourth year and they're going to be uh, involved in the community. One of them is going to join the company, the other one is going to be a master student and be continuously involved. The other thing is Google Summer of Code. Uh, uh, this year, we are, uh, it's the second year we are part of Google Summer of Code. We have now five projects, five students. Uh, last year, we had three students. Uh, out of the three students last year, two are actively invo involved. One of them is actually very actively involved, Maria, uh, and she's now also gaining a maintainership role. Uh, and we now have five, five new students working on different layers. Uh, we are also aiming to, do, to go for Linux Foundation projects, Outreach, and the others. Uh, and another way of recruiting is, of, of course, through the company, through Uni Unicraft GmbH, kind of getting new people, experienced people um, that work both on, let's say, the commercial side of things and the, the open source side. And of course, industry partners, we are uh, both in the open source side. We just had a talk with a company that's interested in Zen and Zen support, and there was now part of a talk with uh, safety. Um, it's, uh, it's part of that, and some other companies, potential clients, uh, we, try, we try to get to draw them to the, to the community. Then the other, I, I think recruiting is one thing, but the most important one is engagement. How do you get people once to contribute and then to be continuously contributing? So for that, what's very relevant is to kind of to keep them challenged. Challenging means you have to have some sort of personal tracks and we have a lot of items and we allocate people, hey, you, you can work on this based also on their technical level and their, their desire. I want to work on it. I think this is interesting. So there's 
Sergio is working on bootloader. Uh, there is uh, Dragos is working on uh, on minimizing and Pi support. Razvan is working on synchronization. Maria is working on security. Uh, Teo is working on application compatibility support. So everyone has their own track that they work on and they also get review tasks or so any sort of item that keeps them as part of the community and also keeps them engaged. Also, we do, we do a healthy level of mentoring. We start early and we have weekly time of times, one-to-one -one, uh, discussions we have, to, we have with them, making sure they make progress, you had any sort of questions, so kind of keeping a close-knit community and making sure that each mentor and mentee uh, are well connected. Uh, there are periodic meetings that happen per track. So uh, actually I'm part, I think, of 10, 12 meetings per, per, uh, per month for the community with different topics, uh, ensuring that everything is, uh, is going well and uh, mentors and mentees are, uh, are communicating properly. And also there is uh, a level that we try to increase of ownership. So kind of empowering people with new tasks that can be technical tasks, that can be uh, community events or any sort of community leadership, such as release management, CICD manager, PR manager, and all those roles, kind of growing people in to keep them engaged. I think this is kind of the most important part here. It's, it's fairly easy to get some people to do something, but to keep them continuously engaged, this requires some extra, extra juice, and uh, these are items that we've been using so far. And for belonging, so being part of the community, we have different items. Uh, up until some time ago, we organized weekly hackathons. We gathered in university um, during sa Saturdays, close to each, each week, and we work on different items. Uh, then we kind of evolved. We now, we now do one monthly hackathon. It's thematic because it, it was kind of too often every week. So we do that together in university. We also keep it online so people can join. It's going to be mostly for people in UPB, in Bucharest for us, but anyone from online can join. We, we, have, we have then some sync calls. We purchase pizza and everything. Starting from last year, we are doing a community gathering. We, we actually get everyone from the community in the mountains. There are people from Germany who fly there, uh, France, uh, UK. We, we, we're trying to get it uh, bigger this year. And in uh, October this year, we're going to have this uh, community gathering to get everyone there. Uh, swag, or public appreciation, so everyone that's contributing has kind of their name attached to it. Every release has the contributor's name on it. Hey, we did this. Thank you so much for that. This, uh, this person did this. These are the fixes, reviews, and everything. Uh, social events, we kind of have dinner outs or meetings or any, anything like that. And continuous support and mentors. As I said, there, there are weekly talks, there are discussions, private discussions, one-on-ones, just to make sure that everyone knows we are part of the same, uh, same group of people. Uh, the other item is resources. And I think this is something that I didn't see that much discussed. Most people are focused on processes and on people. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> but these are very relevant, especially the money part. So I'm talking about services. You want to use something to, well, ensure your, your work is done. You want to get money for contributors, for mentees, for employees. And you need infrastructure to run your code, infrastructure to deploy, to test, to make sure everything is work, working properly. So for services, this is kind of the easy part because for this, we can use GitHub, Discord, any sort of service out there, and it's typically free or has some sort of open source uh, variant that we could use. Using Google Drive, we're using HackMD for a lot of notes. If, you didn't, if you're not using HackMD, I suggest you use it. It's a very good tool to have uh, collaborative editing. Uh, it's, it's fun for that. And of course, we, we have the kind of now with the, with the seed funding and the backing of a company, that can provide services such as the CACD system and all the others uh, are there. For money, well, um, you need money uh, for several things. You want to organize events, you want to get pizza, you want to get some items, uh, you want to get traveling. Uh, and maybe you want, you want, to, you want to have scholarship, right? So how do we do that? Well, we have some university funding. Also, this is part of some collaborations with the with, uh, with companies, but also because we, uh, in the university, we are fairly supportive of open source work, and everything that this will de deal with open source can get, uh, get some funding. So uh, there's quite a bunch, bottom, that bunch of that that we can give for events, for scholarships, for workshops. We have several people that benefit from that or events that we can do. Uh, the company itself provides money, uh, uh, one for employees, and then for other meetings, if we want to travel for 
uh, a conference such as this one to connect with others that's happening. And uh, yeah, Google Summer of Code. So any sort of uh, events, we are now, we are now, we applied for uh, uh, Linux Foundation. This is CNCF mentorship. I don't know what the X stands for. Uh, we're looking for outreach as well. So any sort of program that provides money for projects, uh, we're going to, we are part of that. And this gets, gets kind of a nice uh, amount for people, to, for students to work uh, uh, during the summer. The infrastructure is provided by the university. So in UPB, uh, we have, once again, very supportive open source, virtual machines, CICD system. We have some Kubernetes integration. This happens over there. Test stations, we have, a, we have stations that uh, are now using ARM, uh, that test Zen, test Hyper-V, uh, uh, no, no, uh, Hyper, I, I know it's all Hyper-V, VMware, all the platforms that you're using, we benefit from university and also Unicraft because of the company, and it, it provides you the, the required bits and pieces, uh, gives the infrastructure that, to, that we need. The other part is the process. This is something we're going to see uh, as part of my, uh, my being here at the open source uh, uh, leadership summit. This is a lot of items that people talk about. What I want to uh, focus on here is the actual realistic practical bits that we did. Because in theory, it sounds good. Have better documentation, attract users, make sure you have time for them, uh, make sure they are challenged. But it's, it sounds good in theory. It's, it seems easy to do, but it's a great distance from saying something to actually being able to do it. So let me just go through the items that we did for code management, community management, and raising awareness and see maybe it's something that you can also use for your projects. For, the, for code management, we've been using, well, anything that's GitHub related, all the, all the items out there. So these are kind of obvious items. Uh, CICD is very important. And for us, it, it's very different because we have to build, run different items with different compiler versions. It's kind of very complicated. The CICD system itself is pretty flawed. We've been using Concourse and it's shaky. We're looking for Tecton or some other solution, so we're going to see how that goes. Uh, labels, teams, there's, there's a governance repo that we're using, but only to the minimum. We don't want to add any sort of uh, layer that makes things um, difficult for the community to work on. We've now been using a, a roadmap, and each item in the roadmap has two, two let's say, owners, a project manager and a tech, tech lead. The project owner is responsible making sure things are happening, and the project and the tech lead provides all the kind of the technical muscle to ensure this uh, this gets done. I'm I'm filling project owner role for a bunch of projects, and the kind of the actual smart and hardworking people in the community, not myself, are doing the tech leading. Uh, a lot of well verification validations, and something that's very relevant here, and I I would advise everyone to do this. Uh, up until three, four, three years ago, I think, releases were once every year. And it kind of happened, let's do the release, and you bumped stuff in. Code quality wasn't that great, and it also kind of, step, it, it, it was a lot of time between releases. And then I kind of come with the idea, let's do it every two months. And we, we've been doing, I think, five or six releases once every two months. Uh, and what we are now doing is one, once every three months, it was very difficult. Once every two months was putting a lot of pressure on people. Three months is more, more livable. But if I could just give you the example of the 0 0.13 release, two weeks ago, uh, we had, let's say, I'm not sure, three PRs out of the planned ones. And for two weeks, we now have maybe merged 50 PRs. So releases do work. Deadlines work. Do this periodic release schedule and uh, things will happen. On the community management side, we have a lot of meetings, maybe too many meetings, but we, we try to make sure that each track has the support required. People are communicating, they are on the same page, and it makes sense once you have a live discussion to make progress. So we do that, we, do, we use Discord for that. There are a lot of challenges. If, you, if, you're going to enter my, uh, if you're going to enter on Discord, maybe I can just show you a quick, uh, uh, a quick uh, run here. You're going to see there's quite a lot of channels. So there is, there's quite a bit of them that we have here. Each particular item has their own channel, uh, kind of to organize things uh, neatly. There is a community leadership team. So I'm leading a leadership team, let's call it, that takes care of blog posts, CACD system, um, uh, PR management, governance, uh, 
uh, documentation. Each kind of has their own role and takes care of different items. And these have been students that have been upgraded, promoted to this item. Uh, the track owner technique I just meant you. And also there's a continuous kind of um, feedback loop, making sure that people are making progress and also they are challenged. So if it's too difficult, let's, let's go down. If, it's, if you now have completing it, let's look for something else. So kind of continuously adjusting what you're working on with your current skill level and expectation and time. Um, and for awareness, the, I, I think the most important items for us are hackathons. Um, so we've been doing hackathons. Uh, there's actually a hackathon happening right, no, no, it's not right now because in Europe it's, uh, it's very late. Uh, there's a hackathon that is, was happening 10, 10, 10 hours ago and it's going to happen 10 hours from now in Porto. Uh, there's actually, going, I just talked to Raluca, there's going to be another one here in Vancouver on the 23rd and 24th of September. So we're organizing, we, we contact the universities. Ah, hi, Joel. Speaking of the devil on the 23rd and 24th of uh, September, Joel is our host for the hackathon in, uh, in Vancouver in September. So we've been counting our host and our most gracious and helpful to, for these hackathons and these give us a lot of, let's say, visibility and getting people in. There, there, there's a new employee that we, we kind of uh, advertise Unicraft uh, during a hackathon uh, and there are some other people that are now involved in the community because they took part in these hackathons. We just travel abroad uh, and we do, it's not kind of, uh, uh, I'm not sure marketing it. We are actually doing technical stuff. We are doing PRs. We are doing open source work for two days. And we get, uh, we're getting people in. We had, so there's now in Porto, we had one in Amsterdam. We had one in, uh, in Athens in uh, five weeks time. 29th of March, in, it was in, uh, in Athens. 11th, 10th of, uh, of May is now in Porto. And uh, in between it was Amsterdam. Um, also, when you, uh, this, uh, this is with the help of universities. So Joel is from uh, University of British Columbia. Uh, we have these contacts and we, we, we are able to organize this. this. This also gives us the privilege to advertise when you, when, to kind of create this network at universities. And when we advertise Google Summer of Code, we already pay people, hey, Unicraft is out there. Have your uh, students apply. Um, and yeah, you get kind of this uh, broad exposure to students and technical, young technical people that can, uh, can also not, not only see what Unicraft is about, but maybe make their first or beginning contributions to open source projects. We, are, we were able to get about, I think, close to 50 PRs from the hackathon in Athens because there are a lot of people uh, and uh, they, made it, they made it to upstream, which is pretty cool. Uh, the other one is, of course, conferences, workshops, Google Summer of Code. Uh, every time there's some sort of Google Summer of Code uh, presentation, I'm going to be part of it. There's a plan to have a Google, uh, Google Summer of Code Mentor Summit in October this year, some, somewhere in California, if I recall. So I'm probably going to be there as well. Uh, we'll see about, uh, about my time, but that should happen. Classical blog posts. This is also very important. Uh, I'm, I'm in university, and when I teach, I have only one logo on my laptop, it's Unicraft. So basically all the people, all students know I'm teaching operating systems and everyone knows I'm playing Unicraft and they, come, they now come to me, hey, I want to work on this project. I think it's pretty cool what I have to do, right? So I, I'm also doing some, let's say, recruiting of mentees, but it's also that people know about this and they want to, hey, I want to work on that. Seems pretty cool, the community is building and uh, it works. So having people that are involved in the university and are able to have some technical background to, to get people on board is, is very important. This is what we are doing also in collaboration with, uh, with, with RWTH Aachen and some other universities. And something that we've been doing um, uh, for maybe three months ago, it started, it, it, we were part of FOSDEM in Brussels. And uh, after that, we said we had the idea, we had a lot of Unicornal and LibOS related projects. Uh, Mihai may know there is uh, our professor in operating system, Octavian Purdila, had done something that's called Linux kernel library, and there are some other unique kernel projects out there, Mirage OS, um, uh, Hermitax, uh, uh, what else, uh, unique kernel Linux. So we, we are now doing a unique kernel alliance group. We finally decided on it. We have periodic meetings. We're going to do presentations. We, we want to advertise and to have this consortium 
of unikernel projects to better advertise and raise the awareness of unikernels as a viable solution for different use cases. That may be education, research, or, well, ideally also commercial. So this is something that we are now doing. Be on the lookout for hearing more about unikernels and unicraft with this. So uh, as some takeaways from our experience, from our journey, once again, our journey is from a small research-focused project to one that's now maturing, so a medium-sized project. It's, uh, I think that uh, it's a very important item to consider because people are, you see all the presentations of open source and you, you see people talking about kind of larger projects, how do you organize them? But I think it, this kind of this adolescence phase where you grow from a very small project to a, some, once again, a maturing one, this is also very relevant. This kind of gives you the foundation on top of which you build the, uh, your actual project. So um, these are difficulties that we faced, maybe we are, we are currently also facing. Uh, I added some of them. One of the most important one is that it's very difficult to get people to do reviews in time. That's why, that's why releases happen. Everyone between coding and reviewing will always use, choose coding. Yeah, I, I want to code, I want to do some pull requests, I want to fix that feature. I don't want to, to, to spend time reviewing other, other person's work. This is where releases come in. It's, it's a constant issue. The, 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 I'm pinging people constantly, hey, please review this. We have a healthy number of reviewers and also with the, with the release schedule that helps, but it's, 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 it's a difficulty. The other one, at least for Unicraft, is we have multiple architectures, multiple compilers. It's C language, GCC, different versions. That doesn't work, that works there. It doesn't work for VMware, maybe it works for, for Zen. So having this diversity of, uh, of, uh, of environments is a problem. The other one is the CACD, which is, should be very important, but also in conjunction with the diverse ecosystem makes it very difficult, and we are working towards improving that. And this is, also, it's, it's something that we are struggling a bit with. We, we think this is the way we need to have actually a lot of newcomers, but they tend to overwhelm the experienced people and you need to have some time to properly guide them. Uh, I'm kind of doing this balancing act of uh, getting experienced people and getting uh, newcomers. We are, we are okay with it. We, we're trying to grow new people and experience role and also attract new experienced people just to be able to properly handle newcomers. But this is something that's always going to be the case. It's not going to be like I'm going, I have 10 experienced people and zero newcomers. No, it's, it's always going to be uh, unbalanced uh, on, the, on the maintainer side, but it's something you have to deal with. And also the typical one, you make decisions, yeah, this has to happen, but then decision making to action making, huge difference. It's, it's easy to say it, it, it needs to be done. It's very difficult to actually do it. So this requires time, effort, and resources, and kind of constant nagging, constant thing. This is happening. Uh, challenges ahead. I told you about the code review one. So this is the maintainer time. You do want to have maintainers do the code, the the, the coding, but you need to have some review time for them. Uh, that needs to be balanced. We have poor issue and PR time. So maybe there are some PRs from one year ago that haven't yet been merged. So this is a challenge that we need to address to see how we can actually speed up the rate in which PRs are merged and issues solved. Uh, the obvious one, growing and recruiting experienced people, you need them to kind of get, uh, get the offload from the maintainers. Uh, building, a, uh, building, this is in conjunction with governance model, building a more um, a, a, a well-stabilized, a well-defined community hierarchy. Currently, it's pretty informal. I think that this is something we, we typically say, we are not yet there. So this is a learning process. So as part of our project, we are now learning when is going to be the time and how the community hierarchy is going to look like. It's not yet the time because things are pretty informal, but it seems we are headed that way. Um, yeah, so th th there's also always a balance between code quality and fast merging. You know, there's the, you may have heard of the topic of optimistic merging. I tend to favor that. Most of the maintainers don't tend to favor that. So there is a bit of a conflict there, but we're kind of coming to, a, to some sort of arrangement. But there's always the idea that you, we are very slowly merging because of, slow, because of focus on code quality. So we want to balance that out as well. 
And the, this is kind of, I think this is going to be forever. You want things to be better documented and, and more easily usable. You just want people to click a button and that works. And finally, this is, I think, is the, the most important part here. What I think is items that we learn through the process that can be transferred to other projects. Very important is connect to universities and attract students. I know this kind of sounds easy. I know students out there. But it's something that uh, personally, because I'm also an academic, I feel this must happen and you have a lot of potential there. Of course, it requires a lot of, let's say, caregiving and nurturing, but it provides a healthy number of potential contributors if handled properly. And because you have, and universities are very open. I mean, uh, I know Joel here is a great guy, but we, we also talk to some other people and they are close to, to his level of greatness in being open to, to host us, in sending messages to students. People are very, very open to open source, to organizing events, to helping around. So it's a very nice pool of recruiting talent and getting uh, people to, to work. We actually have people who get assignments and say, hey, I have an assignment for my virtualization class. Can I use this project? Yes, pick up this issue, solve it. Uh, and that's happening. Those people from TU Austin, actually their professor sent, yeah, search the internet and they end up with, the, with our project. Uh, I can't focus on this enough, always be iterating. I know there are kind of guidelines and rules, do this, do that. The key that I see is you want to iterate. You want to do something and then constantly one month, two months, three months, something like that, see, okay, how can I improve this? We switched from a one year uh, release model to a two month one and then three month one. We are now doing a two weeks a feature freeze between the three month ones. So we are kind of constantly revising thing this, how the community should be organized, how, uh, how we do our code analysis, how we're going to do the CACD system. It's nothing is going to be set in stone, and especially for a growing project, you have to have the, let's say the, the versatility and the openness to update the way you are doing things. Not fundamentally change it, but update it along the way. Uh, this is something I'm very fond of communities are building during weekends. So you actually have to put that extra mile and Saturdays are, and weekends are great times for hackathons and the, the different events. People are free and that's when we actually do the bonding, right? When, that's when the belonging happens. Um, also, people are afraid hey, you're going to do this uh, and we only got maybe 10 participants in hackathon. Is it worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. You have 10, you have another 10, you have another 20, keep doing it. It's going to, it's going to pay off, right? So. For example, in Amsterdam, we, we had maybe 10, 12 people at some point, but they managed to do PRs. Uh, one of them is doing reviews. One of them is now an employee of Unicrop GmbH. So it works, but you have to keep doing it. You have to kind of to believe that, okay, it's, it, it's not that much, but if you're doing it, it's, it's going to pay off. Okay, and everyone has their place. So we had people that, hey, I don't know about this very much. You're going to learn. You can do this small thing. There are all these small items there is going on or, you, or you, 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 an issue that we're going to do on. And finally, this is something I also heard from a presentation from, from someone earlier, be human. It's very important to get people to know you are part of the, of the team, you are, you are supportive and you're going to assist them with everything that's required. Very, very important. If you're going to act like some sort of um, puppet here, I went to do this, just uh, whip them to do stuff. It's going to be a nasty relationship. But if you show your, you, know, you are really caring for what they are doing, for their level of experience and making sure they, they are happy with what they are doing, that, that weighs a lot in the, uh, in the greater scheme of things, right? So uh, that would be from my side. These are kind of key items that we, we've learned them. Once again, it's for smaller projects aiming to, to mature themselves. And I'm going to uh, invite you all to contribute to Unicraft. We are a fairly welcoming community, vibrant. A lot of people do not doing a lot of work. Everything you're going to see is it's, it's on GitHub. So if you, ha if you fancy any of those topics, uh, be sure to, um, to visit us uh, on GitHub, on Discord, and uh, we can do very nice work together. That would be it. Thank you so much. I think I, uh, I, uh, I feel the proper amount of time. If there are any comments, suggestions, feedback, questions, I would be happy to address them. Okay, if not then, thank you again and 
We'll keep in touch. Thank you.